So tell me what uh, role music played in your early life. Uh, well, it's my earliest memories. I, I remember singing when I was four years old. I had memorized the whole Joan Baez record of my mother's. I was, she was a big fan, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so it was in the house a lot. And um, she would often have people over, uh, you know, tea parties or whatever. And she'd always sort of shuffle me out and say, Sarah, sing. And so would you say there was a, a musical mentor that you had um, growing up or in your early career? Cat Stevens, mm -hmm. Simon and Garfunkel, Joan Baez, like that real storytelling with really strong, beautiful melodies. I think that the, those were sort of my, my mentors. When I was 16, I heard Peter Gabriel for the first time, and he blew my mind, and um, I just remember watching a, a live video, and I was like, oh, that's, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. How he's making me feel, I want to do that for other people. And um, when I was 17, I was in a band, and the very first gig we ever played, I eventually got signed because of that. But I'd grown up playing classical music, doing classical recitals, which were hideous, and I hated them. I never practiced enough, and it always sort of felt like you're just being judged on every mm -hmm. level. And so being in front of 400 people singing songs that we had written and some great covers that we had chosen, and seeing everybody dancing and, and smiling and, and loving what we were doing, it was the best drug in the world, I'm oh, not going to yeah. lie. I was like, this is amazing. I want to do this all the time for the rest of my life, every waking moment of my life. Right, right, So right, it was right. a real epiphany. And so I just slowly plugged away at it and uh, had a, got my first record, and I had been very lucky with um, Mark Jowett, who was the a and r guy at Network. He was just like, just do what comes to you naturally. He really, they, you know, how they how they mentored me was to give me freedom and to let me figure out who I was musically. Yeah, and to be able to start so young, like starting a career mm -hmm. so young, to be able to figure out who you are first before somebody else tells you who you are, right? Yeah, and, and again, I was very lucky, born and raised in Canada. I stayed in Canada. You know, coming from Nova Scotia, there's very much an ideology of like, you know, don't you go thinking you're anything special. Mm. You know, don't get a big head. And so I've always sort of carried that humility, I think, with me, I hope. Um, and have just, you know, I, again, I just have this immense sense of gratitude for this amazing life that music has given me. Translate that into giving kids an opportunity to learn music, have music education in their lives. I mean, it's one of the first things that gets cut from the public school system, which is devastating to me. I mean, I had music, so much music in my life growing up, and it, as I said, it, it saved me on so many levels. Um, to think that kids might not have the opportunity to learn music, to, to have that, the, the culture of this peer group where your like minds connect and uh, make music together. It's just, it's such a beautiful thing to be part of and I'm so proud of it. And what are you seeing the results? Obviously you've had graduates <clears throat> come out of the yeah. program now. I know how, how are you seeing the, their time here? Has it impacted them in their lives? You know, kids come through, kids who are with our program, they stay in school, they get better grades because of it hundreds and hundreds of letters from parents saying, wow, you know, my daughter was headed in the wrong direction, um, hanging with the wrong kids, was failing school, she came into your music program, she says she's flourishing, she's got a great peer group now. Mm. Watching teenage girls support each other, watching them push each other out onto the stage and hold each other's hands when they're singing solos, and then cheering each other on afterwards, those kind of small successes, those are beautiful moments. Mm. Um, seeing kids get full rides to one of the finest post-secondary musical education institutions in the world, Berkeley School of Music, that's a, a beautiful thing and I know we had a hand in that. I mean, as a general theme, like 78% of our graduating students do go on to post-secondary, mostly non-musical, but academic. Uh, and BC's average, I think, is 49%. So mm -hmm. we're definitely doing something right. And I guess, obviously, with the, the new video that you shot with the, with the senior choir, um, how, what was their interaction like working with you with such an iconic song? Uh, well, you know, part of what we do is creating these opportunities for performance. It builds so much confidence to be able to get in front of a group of people and do that, especially together. Right. To, to make a video and, and, and re-record the song and do a video of it for the Christmas campaign just seemed like a, a natural thing to do. And we already had it in the can, so I was like, okay, we, <laughs> we know this one. We can just get this together and, and record it. And the kids did a great job and, you know, they, they're performers. I think that song, 
but more than any of my other ones, it, over the years, so many people have come up to me and told me their personal attachment to it. Uh, and it's, it's profound. It's like this beautiful gift for me to know that something I created has gone out there into the world and made such an impact in other people's lives. Right. So it seemed like a natural song to do. And I mean, you want to give something for Christmas? Here's a beautiful gift. You can give a kid the chance to have music education in their lives. Mm. We do rely 100% on donations from individuals, foundations, chair, uh, other organizations. And I mean, I pay 100% of all the administrative costs every year mm -hmm. so that every cent donated does go directly into the programming. And with this holiday campaign, there's, there's a bit of incentive too. Like there's some signed CDs. It's sort of like the PBS model. If you get, get to a certain level, you'll get signed CDs or signed um, angel posters that are, you know, part of merchandise items and stuff. So, and to give back to the community that we live in, you know, these kids are all from here. These are our future. Your